Moving on to problem three, we're going to talk um, when you have three or more data points, you are going to use a handy dandy calculator to figure out what the equation will be. We're going to do this just like we did in chapter three with linear regression, but this time we're going to do quadratic regression because we're dealing with, well, quadratics with parabolas. So problem three, this table shows a meteorologist's predicted temperatures for an October day in Sacramento, California. So these are his predicted temperatures. And it's for one day. Notice the time increases to 8 to 10 to 12 to 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now when we enter this data in our calculator, I want to make something very, very specific to you. This is going to, we are going to use our time as our x's just like we did before. Okay, I'll write that above it because it's kind of hard to see. And our predicted temperatures are going to be our y's but we're gonna have a little bit of a problem with our X's, we have to go into military time, okay? So yes, we will keep 8 a.m. as 8, and we will keep 10 a.m. as 10, and we will keep 12 p.m. as 12. But unfortunately, if we type two, your calculator doesn't know that you mean 2 p.m. versus 2 a.m. So 2 p.m. in military time is 14, 4 p.m. is 16, and 6 p.m. is 18 hours, and this is in military time. Okay, so we kind of got to think in military time. And that is to allow your calculator to understand the difference between the hours. What we're going to do is write a quadratic model for this data. In other words, you guys should be able to see that your temperature is increasing, increasing, increasing until it reaches a peak and then is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So your temperatures are taking a parabolic shape or quadratic shape as they increase and decrease. All right, just like you did before, you're going to go to stat, edit, and you're going to clear any old values that you had. And you should remember how to do this from chapter three. We're going to put in our military times, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We're going to put in the predicted values that the meteorologist had. 52, 64, 72, 78, 81, and 76. So those are no different than what they were before. So there they are in our table. Now what we do is we hit stat, just like we did before. We go over to calculate. There we go. And we go down to, since it's a parabolic, sorry about that, since it's a parabolic path, we go down to number five, quadratic, which is a par parable. Hit enter, and we have an A value, a B value, and a C value, and, a, and an R squared. And this tells us how accurate is our data. Well, pretty gosh darn accurate, isn't it? That means if you wanted to guess something that you didn't know, that you could do that. Let's make our equation. Y equals, A goes in front of X squared. So we'll do negative 0.46875 X squared plus b, so plus 14.716071413, I'm keeping all the decimals to be as accurate as I can, and b goes in front of x, just like that, and then the c values at the end, minus 36.1214.2857, so get all of those values in there. Now what we need to do is take your equation, and that's, that's all I want for part A, okay? And then we'll move on to part B. Use your model, which is a fancy way of saying equation in math, to predict the highest temperature for the day. At what time does this temperature occur? Remember, when you're finding now, high temperature is like asking about the maximum temperature, right? When you're finding the min or the max, just find the vertex can't stress that out, stress that to you enough. So they ask you for the max, find the vertex. Some of you might say, Mrs. Langelli, the highest it gets is 81. No, that's just the highest predicted value. Okay, what we need to do is we need to take our equation and do negative b over 2 times a. So negative b is negative 14.716071413 all over 2 times A, um, and that would be negative 0.4687, uh, 
let's put this on there and figure out what what our predicted maximum will be. What's the high temperature of the day? There we go. Negative 14.716027. And we are going to have to divide that by the quantity, don't forget your parentheses there, 2 times negative 0.46875. Close your parentheses, I'm going to double check everything. Hit enter. That is x. Okay, so we'll, this time we'll actually round, we'll just make that 15.7. So approximate is 15.7. Now think about what that, that represents x. So in our problem, what is the x value? Well, the x values are the times. So that is the time, that is the time. Can we make sense of this? 15 hours is noon plus three. It's 3 p.m. And point seven times 60 will tell us how many minutes that is. So 0.7 times 60 makes 42 minutes. So the time is 3.42 p.m. That will be our max. That'll be when it happens. Now the question is, what will it be? To figure out what the high will be, we plug in 15.7, okay? So into our equation. I'm not going to write that all down because it would be crazy. So here we go. Negative 14, nope. Negative 0.46875 times 15.7. Just plugging stuff in and that is squared. I'm using my equation right here. Plus 14.716071413 times 15.7. Just plug in and in. Minus 36.1242857. So the max temperature using our predicted value will be approximately 79.4 degrees. Now you might say, well, this has, says that it's predicted to be 81 degrees. Well, remember how our R squared value was equal to 0.99? That means that our line is imperfect. So do we think that this is going to be a perfectly the high? No, it might reach that 81. But our predicted maximum based on the equation is 